K-State College of Agriculture cares about your health, safety, and our environment. You are integral to the success of our organization. The purpose of this training is to assist you, the trainer, in administering the certification program for personnel operating forklifts. You may find additional guidance to augment your training program in the College of Ag Environmental Health and Safety Forklift Standard of Practice. Good day and welcome to our Forklift Train and Trainer Program. My name is John Gamble. I am the Environmental Health and Safety Director at the College of Agriculture here at Kansas State University. Joining me today is Chance Fiedler, manager of our feed mill, and Paul Blodgett, manager of our flour mill. Chance and Paul will demonstrate how to conduct a forklift operator performance audit for you. Thank you, John. This training will focus on the two fundamental components involved in the forklift operator performance audit process, the pre-use inspection and the performance evaluation. Before a forklift can be used, the operator must conduct and document a pre-use inspection. Forklift inspection forms may vary slightly based on the type of forklift and its specific manufacturer requirements. During the inspection process, at the minimum, the operator should inspect the following items. John and Paul first will inspect the forks on this forklift. You want to check for any signs of damage, cracking, any holes in the forks, and make sure they're attached firmly to the machine. Next, we'll inspect the chains and hydraulic lines. You want to touch the chains, hydraulic lines, make sure there's no signs of fraying, cracking, or excessive wear. Make sure there are no leaks in the hydraulic lines. At that point, we can check the hydraulic cylinders as well. Make sure there's not excessive leaking on those. Another place to check for leaks is underneath the machine. Make sure there are no fluid leaking out of the engine compartment. Tires will be our next point of inspection. You want to check the tires, make sure there's no excessive wear. Make sure there are no holes or chunks missing out of the rubber. Next, we'll look at the propane tank. You want to make sure that the propane tank is fastened securely to the machine. Check the fuel level before operation and check all connections to the machine before we operate. Next, we'll go ahead and check the seat belt, Paul. We want to make sure that your machine has a seat belt on it, first of all, and then make sure it's functioning, operating properly. And Paul, I'll have you go ahead and get on the machine and buckle in. At this point, we'll start the machine and we'll check the controls, make sure all the safety operations are functioning. All right, Paul, your light switch is here. If you wanna turn on the lights and put a hand in front of each light, just to check and make sure that it's operating properly. Same with our rear lights. Okay, this machine has a forward and reverse control, which is the joystick on your left-hand side. Push forward for forward and rear for reverse. You can hear that our backup alarm is functioning properly in reverse. You go ahead and test the horn for me, Paul. Okay, horn is functioning properly. And then your mast and fork controls are here on your right-hand side. If you want to go ahead and raise and lower, make sure those are functioning properly. Your mid controls will go forward and back. And the last control will move your forks from side to side. You'll notice that this machine has three floor pedals. The far right pedal is the accelerator, the middle is the brake, and the left is the clutch pedal. If you want to compress the brake, Paul, and then release your parking brake, which is on the left hand side, and then put the machine in forward and reverse just to make sure it'll operate properly. Very good. You'll notice when Paul started to move the machine that he raised the forks up to a driving height of around six inches, four to six inches, before he started to move the machine. OK, 
Okay, Paul, if you want to shut it off. This completes our safety checklist pre-operation of the machine. Once the inspection is complete, the operator is ready for the evaluation. At a minimum, the operator should be able to perform the following maneuvers when operating a forklift. Okay, to start the course, you want to raise your forks to traveling position, which is four to six inches off of the ground. Do not raise or lower the forks while traveling. Maintain a safe speed. Observe all traffic rules, warning signs, floor load limits, and overhead clearances. Keep arms and legs inside the forklift at all times. Follow other vehicles at a safe distance. Slow down when cornering. Use the horn to alert others when necessary. Travel with the load facing uphill while on a ramp or incline. And stop smoothly when you stop. To pick up the load, you want to square up to the center of the load. Stop with the fork tips roughly one foot from the load. Clear all personnel from the area around. Level the forks and then slowly drive forward until the load contacts the carriage. Lift the load carefully and smoothly until it's clear. Tilt the mast back slightly to stabilize the load. Look over both shoulders and then proceed on your route. To put down the load, you want to make sure there is sufficient clearance for the load. Clear personnel from the area around your loading zone. Square up to the location and stop about one foot away. Raise the load to a placement level. Remember you don't want to raise and lower the load while in motion. Move slowly forward. If the load is on a pallet, you want to lower it into position and then lower the forks slightly further. Look over both shoulders before backing out. Back straight out until the forks have cleared and then lower the forks to traveling position. At this point, Paul will back through the course to our starting position. After you've come to a complete stop, you want to fully lower the forks to the ground, neutralize the controls, set the brakes, and turn off the power. When working with special tasks, such as stacks or docks, here are several key points to remember. Make sure that the dock boards or bridge plates are properly secured and strong enough to handle the combined weight of your lift and its load. Keep the bridge or dock plate as level as possible and free of oil, dirt, water, ice, or snow. Make sure that rail cars or trailers are secure so they won't roll forward when you drive on. Chalk the wheels, set the brakes, or use dock locks. Make sure the floor is strong enough that you have enough overhead clearance. Check to see that the trailer or rail car is secured and buckle your seatbelt before you enter. To place a load on the stack, approach it slowly and squarely. Stop about a foot away. Lift the mast high enough to clear the top of the stack. Inch forward until the load is square over the stack. Level the forks and lower the mast until the load is no longer supported by the forks. Keep forks level so you don't hook anything. Look over both shoulders and back straight out. To remove a load from a high stack, stop straight and about a foot away from the stack. Raise the mast until the forks are at the right height. Move forward slowly until the load is flush with the back of the forks. Lift the load high enough to clear the item below. Look over both shoulders and back straight out to clear the edge of the stack. Stop and lower the load to the traveling position. Tilt the load back and move out slowly. Or slopes. Stay well back from the edge. 
never turn around on a slope. Drive with your load in the uphill position. This means that you drive up slopes with your load in front and down slopes in reverse, unless you're loading a trailer. When forks are empty, you can back up a slope and drive down it forward. Note, when forks are empty, you can drive down the slope forwards. Upon successful completion of the pre-use inspection and evaluation, the operator can now be certified to operate a forklift. Paul, it's important to note, OSHA requires the operator's performance audits to be conducted on each different type of forklift used. In addition, the operator must be requalified every three years. Chance, I would like to thank you and Paul for making this training video possible. And viewers, we appreciate your support and commitment to our health, safety, and environmental program by training your employees to operate forklift safety through this training certification process.